Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm sorry that last week I couldn't post a video, but I was moving as you can see. Yes, and look at all that light everywhere. And it's not even bright outside, but it is bright, but the sun is not shining. So hopefully I'll be able to bring you much better quality videos from now on. But anyways, this is another interview uh, video. And as I said last time, what I want to do with these interviews is show you what you can do as an industrial designer, not just with an industrial design. And last time we had a perfect example of what sort of a dream job is for industrial design sketcher. And this time I really want to go the, the other way and I want to show you like something that's completely different from that. So enjoy this interview. Hello, uh, could you first of all introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Mart. I'm an industrial designer. Uh, I have my own company, Ink Strategy, and I've recently uh, started a new company. So um, I'm not totally leaving Ink Strategy, but I'm well, starting up my new company. Um, 32 years old, from the Netherlands, uh, living in Amsterdam, and uh, yeah, that's me. Love to draw and, uh, and love to design, so yeah. All right, that's perfect. Then let me also jump back uh, a little bit. Well, you studied with me at, uh, well, not with me, but at the same university at the TU Delft in the Netherlands. Uh, question would be, why did you choose the, the TU Delft? The TU Delft? Yeah. Um, all my friends uh, were going there. So, uh, it was just... So it was mostly convenience. Yeah. So uh, we had a group from Nijmegen. Uh, we all came to Delft and we just somehow group decided to all go there. <laughs> okay, but um, you studied uh, ba your bachelor in industrial design also in Delft, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then what was it to say, what was the reason to choose industrial design? Yeah, well, so for, uh, first of all, I wanted to study uh, physics, um, but yeah, then I came to the faculty of physics and then I thought, well, it's a little bit too theoretical, I don't know, a bit too far from my bachelor. That's not really a thing to say. Um, but then I came to industrial design and I saw all these drawings and all these like, like kind of invent, inventing creativity. So, and I used to draw a lot when I was a kid. So I was like, wow, this is super cool. I want to, yeah, I want to study industrial design. So actually I just came in and was like sold. Okay. Okay. And I never really thought about it. So it was, it was just, it was mostly the, the, the sketches and the inventiveness that, that told you that, okay, I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't know about industrial design. I went to Delft with a group of friends and they went to like a mechanical engineering and physics. And a, another friend of mine, he said, let's also go to industrial design. And I just, uh, let's do that. You know? And then I came you there. You were sold. Like, well, it's really cool. Fuck physics. I'm <laughs> Nice. Okay. Uh, did you did you immediately knew, knew that you also want to do a master's right after your bachelor's? No, uh, it was just somehow like in the Netherlands, it's always like you do your bachelor's and your master's together. It's, yeah, it's some something you know. All right. So then the interesting part is because I know that uh, bachelor's is very general, but then in a master's you can um, choose specifications, and you went for strategic product design. Yeah. Could you tell us why you chose strategic product design? Um, well, besides my uh, my study, I when I was 16, I started my own company. I did a lot of programming when I was young. At high school, I, I started my own company making websites with two friends. Uh, so I was always in having my own business. Uh, so during my studies, I also set up several other companies, mainly focusing on on websites, the, uh, programming and designing. And um, well, after my, yeah, I really like the economical part, like the business part of, of designing, uh, of programming. And, uh, I, I just like to be an entrepreneur. And back in the days, you know, now, now it's everything with startups and whatsoever. But yeah, back in the days, was it was just normal. You you did your studies and you go, you went, and you're going to work for a big corporation. <clears throat> But I was all, I always was like, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. I wanna be start my own business. I already had my own business, but not nothing serious. But I really liked, yeah, the entrepreneurial side of it. And I found you had like three masters, and one was uh, more of like really interaction. And for me, that was a little bit too um, 
fluffy, so to say. Yeah, it was a bit too vague. Then you had the really like the design side, uh, really technical. It was too detailed for me. I'm not like the detailed guy. And then you had strategic product design. It was more like what kind of products are you going to design and how are you going to put it into the market? <clears throat> and yeah, that was just something that fitted that was uh, that fits with my entrepreneurial thinking mindset. Okay, can you then also give us a, just a quick run through what strategic product design is for people who never heard of it? Uh, I think it, it might change, but when I started uh, strategic product design, um, it is so in what I always have is designing is uh, if you have the whole scale, you start with, okay, what are you going to design? The fuzzy front end, you don't know what you going to the customer and then you're going to see looking for challenges and then try to come up with something then you came up with something you have this middle part and that is really about um yeah how what should the product look like uh, what materials are you going to make it uh, and all that kind of stuff and when you design a product <clears throat> then it's then it's about okay how are you going to put it into the market what is the, the brand value of this product and how, it's, how does it fit in the portfolio and, and, and all that kind of stuff. So I think strategic product design is really the beginning. Okay, what are you going to design? What kind of challenges are you uh, are you going to solve? Uh, how, how, yeah, and how, what is the need in the market? So the, the, really the fuzzy front end and, and but also the well, once you have a product, okay, how are you going to sell it? Uh, how are you going to do the marketing uh, and everything like that? So that is the, that was then. That was what you were studying then. Yeah, exactly. And why, why do you think there is a change? What, or what do you see? Where do you see the change? I think the change is it's more it's becoming more uh, strategic. So you have strategic design thinking. So you have of course design thinking, which is quite a popular term in in, in business nowadays. And then you have strategic design thinking or strategic design. And I think it's more putting, so instead of focusing on products, it's, it's more about how can we use those design technology of design methodologies in, in business and how can we, uh, instead of having a five year plan, um, in a more design way, uh, have a st strategy for our business. Okay. So, and, and also in change management and, and, uh, how can we use design technologies and change management? How can we make our company more in innovative? So more on a company kind of strategic level. Okay. So more taken away from the actual design process and putting into how do we apply design to management and companies? Yeah, exactly. Maybe a little bit more to management. Uh, okay, then just question would be, when when you finished your your masters your spd masters you already had a couple of businesses running on the side what did you envision would you become just after you came out of, of your masters okay what what is mart vacan going to be now in the future an entrepreneur yeah yeah did, so you didn't you, did, you didn't have a, a specific path but you knew, knew for sure that you want to do entrepreneurship you want to be your own person yeah I just set up my own business that was always like when I was 16, I had that, okay, I want to start my own business. And then what was, what was that business that you set up after? Uh... After my studies? Yeah. That was Ink Strategy. So that was, Inc. so and how many other businesses did you have until then? Uh, so I, I had my first one at 16, that stopped when I started studying. Then I had, I think, three more in my student time. Um, yeah, three, and then I had Ink Strategy. So you're sort of a serial entrepreneur, one could say. Uh, yeah, but then a serial failing entrepreneur. Well, it's, that's how you learn, right? It's, yeah, it's failing exactly. is important. Uh, but, okay, then, so let's let's go just a little bit on to the entrepreneurship. What do you like about entrepreneurship? Maybe one, one question. And another one, do you think that industrial designers like are, are a good fit or are a specifically good fit for entrepreneurship? So the first question is, what, what, why, why do you go, uh, why do you go towards entrepreneurship? What do you love about entrepreneurship? Yeah, I just like my uh, setting my own goals, having my own vision, uh, yeah, building something, 
uh, and 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 just go without you know. I, I, you don't like constraints. No, I don't like constraints. I don't like that people tell me what to do. Um, so I just like having my own vision, my own yeah, my own vision of the future and something I want to go towards. And you know, I, I like growing and, and attracting people and putting together a group of people to well, get somewhere where you want. Very That's cool. what I really like. Yeah, I like somehow freedom, and I like I'm I'm a lazy guy, <laughs> so I like doing things very efficiently. Although people might say that I'm, that I'm not that I'm chaotic, maybe, but I just like to have the, the minimum input, maximum output kind of thing. And I somehow and and that's not possible if you're not your own boss. I don't know. For me, it's not possible. Okay. If somebody tells me what to do. Uh, I, that's for me is already inefficiency. So yeah. But yeah, for other people it can be different. But for me, that I don't know. I just don't like that. All right, very cool. And then, do do you think is is there is there a connection between industrial designer and entrepreneurship? Do you see do you see that there there is a strong path for industrial design to choose uh, entrepreneurship? Yeah. So, well, I think an entrepreneur is kind of an inventor, right? Uh, you invent your own business. Either it's a product, and you're a real inventor, or it's a new service, or what whatsoever, a new business model. So, I think a lot of people. Yeah, you as a designer, you are kind of an inventor, right? So for me, kind of, if you design stuff, entrepreneur, you or inventor, it's kind of the same. It's you know, it 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 all it are all terms that we use to describe like activities. Yes, but for me, it's like the the core is okay. You have an idea. And you're going to make that reality. Yeah, you can call it an inventor, you can call it a designer, you can call it an entrepreneur, but I think that's all quite close. It's just, yeah, you have an idea in your head, it's not there yet, and you see it in front of you, but nobody else sees it, and then you're going to make sure that it's going to be reality. And that can be a physical product, that can also be a service or something else. So. All right, very cool. Uh, a question that also works together with this one is usually I, I like to give an example of what people can end up by studying industrial design. So do you do you know any of your former uh, study mates who also studied SPD in what sort of industries they're working right now? Yeah, quite a lot are an entrepreneur. Okay. Uh, either freelancing uh, or really setting up a company. And for me, the difference is a bit like if you're setting up a company, you you want to make something that is bigger than yourself, whereas a freelancer is more focusing on doing multiple projects by him or herself. Mm -hmm. What I see is is a lot of people end up in kind of service design, design thinking jobs in companies in big corporates or at innovation departments. Uh, or yeah, the design department of, of, of big companies, mm -hmm. but also on a more management level. Uh, yeah, and then it's because industrial design is so broad. You, uh, you see people everywhere. That, that that is that is yeah. It's not yeah. It's not it's not like you're going to study medicine and become a doctor. You're going to just study law and you become a lawyer. With industrial design, you can become literally almost. You everything. can become literally everything. Okay. So, yeah. Very good. I, and I see a lot of people end up everywhere. So. Nice. That's that's good. Good to hear for our listeners, I guess. Yeah. Uh, before we close out the the industrial design part, the study part, um, what do you think is the most important thing or tool? That you took away from from the five years or how many ever years of studies that you did your industrial design studies the most important thing, thing either either something a learning or or maybe a tool or or whatever you think is the, is the most important thing that you took away from the studies i think and so what and what and also the difference what i see in other studies is um you really learn how to work together it's, yeah it's if you're designing something, it's kind of, you really have to do it together, you know, and, and it's not like when you're writing a report, uh, somebody 
does chapter one and somebody else does chapter two. You have to really get you have a vision on how this product looks like and somebody else also and, and you have all these different perspectives. How are you going to design something? How are you going to design one thing that is that everybody likes? So that's quite a challenge. So can you just exp explain a little bit? Because I guess most people who don't study at the TU Delft maybe have a different way of studying. So what do you mean by uh, working together? Yeah, for example, um, one of the assignments was to make a, a portable kitchen. So uh, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. So how can you how can you make a, a, a portable portable kitchen for a, for a company? So that they can like show the yeah their their the stuff they sold in in a, in a conference or something like that. So we have to come up okay, so you have to come up with a physical product and not like we didn't have to build a kitchen but we have to make to make the sketches and the story and how it looked like. So you you just like okay this is the assignment <clears throat> and and just. In ten weeks, you have to make, you have to come up with a presentation. How and and how many people are in a group like this then? Yeah, we're five people. I think mostly four to five people. Yeah, so you're just sitting there. Okay, yeah, you're literally okay. There's nothing. Okay, we have to come up with a portable kitchen. Okay, what are we going to do? And then you, then you have all these group dynamics. People have different perspectives. Uh, yeah, it's it's quite difficult to come up with one product in the end or one set of products. Um, and I. I really think because you do that quite often and it's always like a struggle and some groups are cool or good and sometimes you end up in a group where you have a couple of people that are not really good, you know, that's also the, the reality. And I think, yeah, you really learn how to work together and that is what, it, it, and how you work together is like constantly communicate very well what you've done. So okay, what this is what this is what I've done. This is my vision. You have to really clearly communicate yeah. uh, what you what you're up to, what your what your plans are, what your vision is, uh, how you how you look at the product. <clears throat> I think it's learning by doing, and if you do that so many times, I think really collaboration is what you learn in industrial design. Very you good. cannot really you cannot really design a product on your own. That's not possible. Just yeah. like an entrepreneur, you cannot build a company on your own. You need other people. Yeah. And I think what you really learn is how to collaborate. Nice. That's a very good uh, uh, answer. And just one thing I would like to add to this is that in these groups, you usually have the, the, the three disciplines. So the, the proper product, well, not proper, but the traditional product designers, the strategic product designers, and also the design for interaction people. So people will approach this from quite different. Uh, yeah. And that's why you have to communicate uh, quite clearly yeah them. exactly and yeah. also to balance it off you can spend all your time design the actual product but you also have to spend time okay how do, how do people interact with it is this the right do, is this really solving a problem for the clients and how are you going to set it into the market you know so you really from different angles yeah. there's no better it's not if you do more design on the product, it's not better than if, or if you do more marketing, you know, you have to balance it out. And that's, I think, quite difficult to do when you, when you have a group of people who all have their own opinion. Exactly. Oh, great, great takeaway. Okay, so now let's turn into what you do now. Basically, Inc. What, what is Inc.? Uh, what does Inc. do? What, did you, what do you do by Inc.? And then later, what your new uh, company is. So let's talk about what is Inc. and what do you do there? Uh, Inc. Uh, Inc. Strategy is a yeah we call ourselves uh, strategic designers and we help we are not the consultants in a literal in a, in a traditional way uh, where consultants you go to a company you do some research and you give advice say okay this is what this is what I think you guys need to do whereas we more help companies uh, with their vision and their strategy uh, and their change management. Uh, and we say, okay, let, let us help you to formulate a vision and to visualize a vision for your company and to visualize the future uh, with your management team, with your sub-management team and translate that vision through all departments so that in the end it is very clear for everybody, okay, this is the vision, this is the strategy, this is something where I can relate to um, and we put that into visuals so that it's recognizable uh, and fun more emotional <clears throat> so we do that in workshop forms so we literally draw the vision so we're going in a room with management team 
and we ask questions and we while doing that we visualize their vision and those visuals we we put into like nice images digitally animation that kind of stuff and then uh, spread it into the organization and the result is often what we say it's a vision driven transformation so we believe if you have a nice clear vision then the and, and you go towards that vision, then the transformation is a result of that. Instead of focusing on all these transformational stuff, no, you have to have a nice, good vision. This is where we want to go. Everybody aligned in the same vision. Everybody's engaged. Everybody knows no company where to go to. Then the transformation is a result. Very, very interesting. I think this is quite different from what you would expect uh, an industrial designer to do. So I think a fitting question is then how does industrial design come in here? Or how did you transform your industrial design knowledge into, into applying it into, into, to this? Yeah, so I think it links back to the collaboration. So you have all these different, you have a management team, you have a CEO, CFO, uh, technical operational guy, whatever. All different perspectives and instead of designing a product now we're going to design a vision and we do the same process we listen to each other we we sketch it out we make the visual and we make sure that the, the that, that group really collaborates with each other and has, has the same shared vision so not the same product but the same well vision of the future um, so yeah, it's about, all about collaboration and, and help them to, well, spread that vision throughout the organization. It's also about communication, collaboration, getting everybody on board and, and on the same page. And so what, one, of the, one of the reasons why I'm making this series of interviews is to show people that industrial design is not just about fancy industrial design sketches. But in this case, you took the, the, the sketching tool and then you reformed it and applied it for, for yourself how 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 does sketching work in in this case how how do you apply the skills that you learned in, in university here or what is different compared to traditional industrial design sketching you would say i think traditional design sketching industrial design sketching is really making something look like reality or really communicate a form communicate how a product looks like and make that appealing to people so that oh, this is what we want to make well this is more in using visuals as a really quick communication tool is this what i mean no it's not no, is this is it yeah oh, this is it and by asking we ask oh, a lot of times we ask the question how can we draw it so for example people say yeah we want to put this, the customer in the center you know it's got it's by the common uh, theme among in companies. Yeah, we are customer centered. Okay, what does that mean? Do, do I draw a customer in the middle of your company? No, 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 it's not what we mean. Okay, but that's what you say. Okay, no, it's not what we mean. So you, you put the customer on the table. Uh, no, 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 no. And they start laughing. Okay, how can I draw it? Okay, what, yeah, how, how would you put the customer in the center? Yeah, it's about listening to the customer. Okay, so you listen, you, so you're going to sketch it and then people start thinking, oh, wait a minute, it's not just, you know, customer centric is just a word, but what does it actually, actually mean? And by making it visual, you make it very concrete and, and tangible uh, with what you may actually mean. And so, in, and using that visual, people yeah, really come on the same page, literally, it's always that's that's funny or work you have a lot of you have a lot of sayings like uh, getting on the same page or uh, we have to go back to the drawing board you know it's literally that going back to the drawing board and we sketch it <laughs> we're already on the same page is this page what you just sketch is that your page you know yeah. so that's what we do and we yeah we use the sketch really fast so it's not like if we if we sketch it and it's not like whoa it looks really cool really nice and it's just okay this is a, a person and this is a, a building and this is an arrow. So that is what you see. And this is a metaphor of ship uh, and we are a ship uh, driving to the, to the future, the horizon with the sun. So you understand that, but it's not like the visual at that time, it, in that point is not very beautiful. Yeah. In the end, we turn it into very nice visuals that people see and they go, oh, that's super cool, but we, we really, 
to sketch really fast just to get something so that people understand what you're sketching. All right, I think uh, that's quite a quite a good uh, view of what ink is. Do you do you think you want to share anything else about ink strategy? No, it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is fun. All right, very good. And then let's let's go to the last point: is uh, what 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 you're doing now aside from ink strategy? Since you said that you're starting off something new. Yeah. So. Um, I said I did programming right, um, so uh, although I really like uh, like my job at Inc and what we do or work, um, I, I felt something that was missing, something like the technology, and, uh, and uh, I just wanted to, well, go to my uh, uh, computer and did some coding. <coughs> so uh, yeah, it was just an idea that formed in my head for for. I don't know, one year or something and it now turned into what we want to do is the handicraft industry is growing so a lot of people want no more industrialized clothing for that you can buy for five years now you want something that is handmade you want a handmade bag you want a handmade shoes you want handmade interior and it is uh, we're in we're living in an over industrialized world so the, the, the demand for handcraft products is growing. But on the other side, um, there are a lot of they're becoming more and more designers, fashion designers, interior designers. People like designing stuff, and so you see that people want more designed, cool, authentic stuff. And people are there are more and more people who are going to design that stuff. But there's a problem that is namely how are you going to make it? You can make it yourself, but then it stops after you. You can maybe make a couple of shirts per week, but then what are you going to do? You go to Bangladesh, and then you have to be. Then you become industrial, you know. <clears throat> so we went a lot to Africa and other developing countries, and then we saw there are a lot of people who really can make really nice stuff. They can make stuff with wood, stuff with fabrics, and it's just amazing. The colors they use it is very beautiful. But the problem there is they have like they are competing in an internal market and the stuff they make it's not something that we would buy so what we say is we want to build we want to help people in for example the netherlands to build their own brands to become their own fashion designer brand uh, and what we do is we help them uh, source the products from africa so what we say we're going to build the biggest virtual workshop uh, and we make sure that the designer gets samples. We make sure of logistics. We send it to the customers. We make, we we, we uh, fix the finance. And then a, a designer can just focus on building their own brand design and sell it to their customers, and we take care of the rest. But is the designer here, and the manufacturing happens in Africa, or is also the designer in Africa, and here is just the person who puts everything together? No, the design is here. Yeah. So let's say you want to, you, you're a designer, you want to make uh, new shoes, you have cool ideas to make shoes, and you want to focus on designing new shoes and sell that to customers. You go to me, we get a couple of samples, we get it right, uh, and then you can, starting from today, you can sell the shoes. If, even if you have just, if, even if you just sell one shoe, we, we make it and we ship it to the customer. Okay. So we make it really easy for people to set up their own brand. We will help them. And we will take care of all the logistics, all the nightmare that is involved in production. And we do quality checks and we ship it to the customer and we make your customer happy. So that the designer, for example, you, you can focus on yeah, doing what you're good at, designing cool products and sell it to customers. Okay, so then the question on my part is like what is the, the business case because usually it's very expensive to do one of products so how do you how do you profit off of this or how do you not go into into the red with this uh, business model the business case is yeah, we get a fee for that per product okay but what, so because we will have we will have all the connections of all the people who make it um, yeah, we, we get a fee, uh, we get a small fee for, for, for arranging that 
and sending it to the customer. And then on the other end, you're helping out developing countries and, and peoples and manufacturers in developing countries. Exactly, yeah. So we have a social goal. Yeah. So one, one goal is to set up a business, of course, and become, become a big company. And our social goal is, yeah, we're not, uh, we, do, we do not want the kids to make it in big factories. No, we want people there to get a fair price, get a good price, and help them to develop themselves. So that's like our social goals, pay fair prices, make sure they have, they, their incomes uh, uh, grow. Yeah. Um, I think that's also a big positive because there's an, there's an awa awakening where everybody would like their products to be as fairly sourced as, as, as possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so that's, that's on our end. So maybe I didn't emphasize uh, enough. So we really have a social goal also in sustainability. So we start with a social, like more a social goal for people, but we also want to make it sustainable, of course, with to, to one step at a time. Um, but uh, and, and yeah, what, what, what we see people like handcraft, handmade products, but also from a fair, you know, they want they want they want their products to be built with love or passion, not by kid, kids in, in Hungary or in slavery, but but by people who, who earn a lot. Or, and who have a good life. Yeah. So we really want to make it personal. For example, you design you design a shoe, we produce it, uh, and yeah, how cool would it be? And the, you, the manufacturer of that shoe, handmade the shoe, makes a selfie, sends it to the to the customer. Hey, this is my shoe, specially yeah. made for you. Yeah, it, it must have a story, uh, and it must be personal. And yeah, in this over industrialized world, well, that, that's get some passionate, nice, cool, uh, handcrafted products. Nice. I think that uh, sounds like a really, really cool idea. What would you say to encourage people to become entrepreneurs or especially encourage industrial designers to take the path of entrepreneurship? I can only speak for myself, but okay. In your daily life, you, you encounter a lot of stupid things, nice things um, whatsoever. Uh, daily life is, can be difficult, daily life can be easy. <clears throat> um, but I see a lot of people focusing on happiness. Oh, I want to be happy. I want to have the, the job that gives me happiness. I don't, I, I, entrepreneurship is not about happiness. It's not about every day you wake up, I'm super happy. But, and that's, not the, that's also not the, the goal. But you got to have a purpose. So my or purpose really... Okay, how can we help people in develop, developing countries? How can we really stimulate them? How can we grow? And on the other side, how can we help fashion designers, interior designers, and anonymous who build their own company or build their own brand? And and that is really important. If you have like some, and this is just my purpose, and it's also not like from day one that was my purpose, but now it just forms and it's uh, this is. It, 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 it gets to a point where you wake up and you think, oh, this is really cool. If this works, that would be so cool. Mm -hmm. Then you can survive every day and some day are just shitty. Then you just close the door, go to bed or watch a movie. And the other day you feel very happy, but don't pursue happiness, pursue a purpose. Yeah, so basically, ju just to see if I understood you correctly, if you are sort of a person for whom happiness in itself is not enough, if, if you always want something extra, if you, if you want to build something and, and make something grow, then entrepreneurship is should be should be the road for you. Yeah, yeah. But on the other hand, I would say to everybody, don't pursue happiness. In yeah, it's just it's just you know this treadmill, uh, the happiness treadmill. You know, you do something where you, a lot of happiness. What would the, there's no end goal in happiness. Yeah. So that is. Yeah, that is quite difficult, right? So it's uh, if you pursue happiness, you come into this threat man. There's no goal. There's no, and then oh, if you do this, then I will be really happy. If it, yeah. If you have a purpose, then it's the, the feeling. It's just another feeling, like you feel uh, satisfied or something, or you you cannot you can reach for a goal, and you feel satisfied. Doing that, yeah. even if you don't reach it, 
Yeah. And that's a completely different feeling than happy. And sometimes you're happy and sometimes you're not happy. You just accept it. You know, it's just a roller coaster. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, a, a fantastic yeah. point to close this interview on. Thank you very much, Mart, for joining us. Thank you. Nice. Well, thank you very much for Mart for sharing his story and his thoughts with us. That was uh, this week's interview. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can see all the different things you can do as an industrial designer. And yeah, if you like this video, please leave a comment and hit that like button. That always helps. Also, consider subscribing if you would like to see more content like this. You can follow me on Instagram. And yeah, wish you guys a great week and see you folks next time. Bye bye. I think it's also something that is, yeah, that is also strategic product design. I think it's okay. Where are you going to start? This affects this, but this affects this, this affects this. So, okay. So everything affects each other. So okay, what are we going to do first? And everything changes if I change this. So it's really like every day, a lot of things change, the ideas change. And sometimes I'm like, oh, what the fuck, what am I doing? And I'm, <laughs> this is so big, I cannot do this. And the other day I'm like, yes, it's going super well. Uh, it's like an emotional roller coaster. So uh, that's, that is, yeah, you have to accept that. Otherwise you will go crazy. <laughs>